Good morning, everybody. This is Thilo from Germany. I'm very happy to have you on my workshop about modernization, and we will do it live today. For you that you know who I am, it's me. I'm Thilo Volkrich, CEO and founder of Team Technology, the home of Teamworker. There's a picture where you can see me. Uh, what I'm doing, we have been Beacon Award finalist with the product Team Worker in 2018. I'm an IBM champion and also an HCL ambassador. I love Domino and I'm doing that stuff since 2003, so a very, very long time. If you want to get in touch with me, there are my contact details. Uh, the easiest one is tilo at teamworker.com. Uh, just in case you want to connect with me, just drop me an email and yeah, we will get in touch. What I want to show you today is how to beautify and boost your Domino apps and I will do it live. Uh, as you may have read about the workshop today, I will uh, don't do a lot of theoretical things. I just want to share how it is made in practice, how it works and what is possible and what not. And also at the end, uh, you have the option to, to give me some uh, requirements and I try to uh, do it live and show you how you can uh, do it in TeamWorker. Before we start, before I jump into the product, I want to give you a very, very short overview of what TeamWorker is, how it works and how it compares, competes to the uh, Nomad and the AppDev client. So, just in case you want to understand where Teamworker lives in this area. So what is Teamworker? The purpose with Teamworker, you are able to transform the existing um, desktop optimized, sometimes or mostly old fashioned HCL nodes applications into a true mobile user experience. So all we have done is concentrated on uh, making it available on a mobile device but also uh, works with a desktop client or an iPad or anything you can think about. And it just works on every device. But we start with a small one and then screw it bigger. Uh, it's easier instead of doing it the way around. So if, as said before, it works on every device. So it's responsive out of the box and you can use it on every device and you have to do a single configuration for all these different client types. How this is be done, I'll show you in a second. So first of all, you have to understand what Teamworker is. Teamworker is a single nodes application you put on the server and then all the traffic goes through Teamworker Team worker connects to the original database, grabs the data in real time, uh, mixes them with the design and then brings it back to your client, whatever client it is. So you have no changes in your applications. So the original application resists where they are. Uh, you can work uh, on both clients at the same time. So you can work in nodes and you can work in Teamworker. Uh, also no data are, are grabbed from the original database. So we have not doubled the, the data. The data stay in the original application and we read them out in real time. We have no changes on the server. So you don't have to change any configuration or something like that. We have no DLLs or tasks needed to be installed on your Domino server. There's so no additional things which may slow down your Domino server. You don't have to put it on. You just need a single version of Teamworker and you can start. For sure, it has to be signed as everybody of you know, it's a Domino application. You have to sign it to make it work. Okay, there's one thing we need on the Domino server it's a folder, just a single folder, uh, because of by using Teamworker, you are able to upload attachments to your application. And maybe these are bad uh, attachments. So before we put them into an application, we put it in a folder 
and then we grab it and put it into the application. By doing so, you are able to have an, a watcher, a virus watching on this folder to look if something bad uh, is within this attachment and you, have, uh, you can have your system clean. We have minimum requirements. There are just two things. We need a domino server starting from 853 or above. So 10, 11, everything works. And we need an, a, a running HTTP task. We need this HTTP task running just on one server, just on the server where team worker lives on. So you can connect to, to different server with one team worker installation. And on this server, you need the HTTP task running on the other servers you don't have to. The security is completely respected. So your data stays safely behind the firewall. If you put team worker in front of the firewall and have the data behind, it's uh, completely fine for us. Um, yeah, and the user rights, so read and write will be honored based on the domino directors agree. So there's no changing of the security level of the domino server. All the things you do in team worker are done by uh, the user. So in the name of the user, so there's no way around uh, the domino security. And we have big installations. You see the, the customers we have, we have big installations uh, in different uh, countries, different companies, and they work with up to three and a half thousand users a day. So it's really uh, easy to have it on one Domino server and work with it. <clears throat> if you ask yourself, okay, why should I choose Team Worker? There are so many different things around. There's the Nomad Client and the App Dev Pack and all the things. So we have thought about uh, when is the right uh, uh, the right environment to use team worker. So we have th three different targets and you have to choose which target you are interested in. So the, the first one at the top is use your existing skills. So if you are a notes developer and want to use your existing skills, not interested in learning a uh, single page application, JavaScript, all the web stuff, then the, the next one is no additional license costs. So if you want to not invest any, any money, then this is the second target. And the third target is you want to have great user experience. So not something looking like 2003 when I started. So you want to have a really modern interface and uh, user experience. Then uh, this is a third target. So, and if you have to choose, you only can choose two. It's not possible to resolve all the three targets with one solution. So if you want you to use your existing skills and you don't want to have additional license cost, then Nomad is the way to go. Nomad right now is available on the iPhone, the iPad and on the Android devices. And shortly it will be available in the browser as I heard. If you want to have no additional license costs and you want to have a great user experience, you can use the AppDev pack. So it's a, a helper, it's a Node.js server where you can connect to with any front-end framework and then you can develop your uh, complete uh, front-end as you like. It can look completely different. You can make it your own, but you have to have um, yeah, you get the great user experience, but you need to have skills for doing so. <clears throat> and if you want to have um, a great user experience also, but use your existing skills, then you're right in my session today because this is where Teamworker comes into uh, came in. So use your existing node skills. You don't have to learn any JavaScript or something else, and you will get a great user experience. So this is what we are talking about today. And there's one thing we are always uh, thinking about, what is the perfect system? So the perfection is archived, not when there's nothing left to add, but when there's nothing left to remove. What is this meaning? It means uh, if your system is very slim and very easy to use without any technical 
uh, training or it just works and it shows the functionality the, the, the user is interested in, then you have the right uh, thing, uh, you have the right uh, solution uh, created. So if there are a hundred of buttons for doing everything, maybe the people are not able to use it anymore because there are too many options and they don't know what to do. So as uh, said before, we will do the modernization live today. So we start from zero, we have a blank paper and we start from zero and then you can follow what we are doing. And I just want to, to make tricks or doing some magic. I just show what we are doing and you can follow live what I am doing. So please uh, open your browser or if you want to open your mobile device and switch to HTTPS demo.teamworker.eu slash Arnuk. And if you do so, you will open uh, one team worker instance on our server and we have the, the the standard login interface so that you can see yes this is really domino and the username and the password is arnok so all lowercase and then you should uh, see our uh, web interface so just repeat this that everybody can go into https demo.teamworker.eu slash arnuk and username and password is arnuk all lowercase. So that everything I want to show you theoretically. Now we are in the practical part of the presentation and I hope that somebody of you is in and if you are in and if you are connected, then you should see the same screen as I do. Uh, little difference, you see Arnuk at the top right. Um, maybe you see, uh, you should see Arnuk. Yeah, it's completely right. You see the same as I do. Okay. So if you have problems to connect to, just uh, give a hint. There should be a chat or something where you can put it in. If you have problems, just uh, give an info to us and we can uh, help you. Okay, so as you can see right now, we have nothing in here. It's a completely blank team worker instance. And now I want to show you what is possible uh, by doing a modernization of an existing application. So maybe you have seen this before, maybe not. This is Teamworker. It's just an application. Um, yeah, it's a notes application. And you can see different things here like modernization and the administration part. I skip over the analytics part today. You can join next week. Maybe I can uh, show you some information about this. And if you start with Teamworker, you put it on your server then you add uh, the signing. <clears throat> you sign it with the people, uh, with the person who can sign. So maybe the server or a special signer. And then you have to do two things to get started with Teamworker. Go to administration basic settings. And there you have to choose the names NSF. We need this for uh, resolving groups and find out in which groups you are. So just put this in and you have to add a temporary path, as I told you before, for the virus scanning where we can put the attachments in. After doing so, you need a license. So you go in here and just say request a license key and then you can put in some info. I'd want to test it. So if you are interested in, you can test it out and you will receive a license key from our site and you can easily work. That's everything you need to get started and then you can work with Teamworker. What we have here, uh, what you will receive when getting the Teamworker template is all the languages uh, we have in, uh, uh, we have uh, translated. 
So Team Worker is not only available in German or English language, the back end, the Team Worker Management Console is English, but all the other stuff is uh, in all the, the languages you see here. So this should be 14 or something, uh, 15 right now. So you can start, uh, even Chinese is possible. So all the left to right languages are available. So let's start with the modernization. What I want to show you today is we have an application here. It's an address book. And as you may know, if we do a presentation and show you some demo, some of our competitors are doing a demo with having five documents in it. So every system is fast if you have five documents in it. So we want to start with the bigger one and we have, oh, let's see 9,988 documents in here. So it's, a, it's not huge, but it's a bigger uh, database. And what we have here is we have different views for the, for the user. So we have a flat view where we show uh, all the addresses without any categorizing. We have uh, some sorting options. So like sorting the location and sorting the first name only. And we also have other views like by region where we show all the, uh, the countries. So this is Germany, you can open it and we can also the Russian Federation we can open it and see all the documents underneath the, the category. And we have an alphabetically one. This is very helpful if you are working on a mobile device, if you want to find someone. So you can, uh, you can open the first letter of the last name, and then you can open the second letter of the last name, and then you see there are not that many people in. And you should see that I am in here. So this is me. This is the only real address in here. All the other addresses are fake addresses. So you can see maybe the number is the same on different addresses. For sure they are. These are just fake addresses. So you don't care. You can't call the people here and find out who it is. So if you go into you see, okay, we have some identity, some contact infos. Ah, there's an address information. Okay, and if we go into edit mode, we see, ah, okay, there's something we can uh, select from. Ah, there are all the countries we can select from. Okay, and there's cities. Oh, there's an error. As you can see here, there's no city selector here because just Munich is here. So if there is a problem in the original application, you will have the same problem in the other application, uh, in the team worker application for sure. And you can see uh, I can just inherit from the company and then all the information of the address are hidden. Okay, what we are doing right now, we want to make this application available by using team worker. For doing so, I switch to team worker and I create a new, we call it container. We call it container because it's not only a notes application, it can also be a notes template if you are using uh, many applications using the same uh, template, then you can create one, you can create one configuration in Teamworker and you are able to connect an application with this template and then so you are able to modernize a lot of applications really, really fast. So we want to start here. I say new document. I want to have a notes database. And I just select the database by open the database selector, you know, from Domino. So I switch to the demo server, go into apps. And there I have the demo address book, as you can see here, I select it and I save it once. By doing so, all the information of the address book itself is written out, especially the information who is allowed to access this application. So you can see editors or above, so the default user, the domino, it's a person on our side, Patrick, my colleague, or Arnuk, as you can see here, 
this is Arnok, this is you. This is the user you are using right now. And so you are able to see this application. If you are not in the ACL of the original database, you don't have access and you can't see it within Teamworker. Just to make it more clear, I want to add some information here. Uh, this is the database title. This is the information you will see on the screen in a second. And we will add the description, life modernization with uh, Anuk attendees. And I saved it. And this is the first result we get if we go into Team Worker and do a refresh or refresh in the browser or on a mobile phone, we can see a demo address book Arnuk here, and you can see a live modernization with Arnuk attendees. What we do on every side is you are able to filter this. You are able to filter any list you see here. So if I put in Arnuk, okay, this is the result. If I write something bad, you see nothing is in the result. So it's working like expected. So now we have the address book here. Oops, I have to switch this. Okay. So I want to, as you can see, if I jump into, there's nothing to see because we haven't added any information. So to make it possible, uh, to make it available, you have to add some views. Some of the views already exist in the application. So for the demo purpose of today, I want to have the alphabetically view, the regional view, and the Vlad view. These are the three views I showed you before. As you can see here, we also have the folders and can make them available. And we have hidden views if you want to have, uh, if you want to show hidden views to a user, it's no problem. And I hit OK. And now Team Worker analyzes the views, uh, reads out the design of the views, and compacts these information about the design in a very compact uh, data set within Team Worker. Uh, and to be sure, it's just the design, it's not, not the data. So by doing so, selecting the views, we are now able and have all the three views I selected before and they are available now. So if I just renew or hit refresh, I see all the views I selected before. And if I go into the flat view, for example, I jump into and you see these are all the informations uh, we have seen before in the flat view. If I scroll down, Maybe you can recognize that there is some loading indicator for a very short time. I don't know if a Zoom is showing this, but there is a loading indicator. So it's an endless scroll. You can scroll as long as you want and go down and find all the data. The important thing here is that by doing so, we only load a small bunch of data, not the whole view. So this is the reason why we are very fast. And you should see the server we are working on resists in Munich. And if you click something, you should see uh, the performance, how it works if you are in Russia, like you are. The same as I did before is here. So we have filter or search this list. So if I start typing here, I get all the information from the people who have Tonino somewhere in the uh, in the data set. So we do a full text search and find all the information you are interested in. And you also are uh, able to add some formula if you know the formulas from the notes client. You can use it here also. I can say or, or Heidelberg. So Heidelberg is a city in Germany. Then I get all the data from Tonino or Heidelberg. And for sure, these are more than just Tonino. If I remove it, I get all the data back I've seen before. And as you can see here, we all uh, also grab the information 
about the sorting options you have in the notes client. So if I click on location, now it's sorted by location. If I click on first name, then we get it in uh, ascending order or discending order. <coughs> Instead of the domino, uh, the, the notes client, notes client showing only this very small indicator uh, about the sorting option, we have made it yellow to make it more visible to uh, that you are sorting the, uh, the data right now. Okay. As you can see in the top, we have a breadcrumb and the breadcrumb always show where you are. So this is home, this is our starting point. Then we have the demo address book Arnook and the, the view we are working with. And it's just not, it's not just an information about what, uh, where you are, you can also use it for navigation. So if I click here, then I go back to the demo address book, Arnok. So let's switch into another, let's switch to the region one. Now we see all the regions. If I go to Germany, we see all the German things and uh, a very funny guy changed New York to, to make part of uh, Germany. Then you see, okay, there's in New York, there are some uh, people and these are the areas in Germany. So you see, we have not just a single category, we have multiple categories showing within the data here. And uh, the same as on the long list, on the flat one, we only load the data you need. So we don't load all the data, we, we load the categories. And if you click on one of the category, uh, we can work that. Okay, so yeah, it looks okay. The performance is good, but as I see the address by region, I don't like the, the description here, uh, the title here. So I want to go back and want to change this and make it available to, uh, to you here. So I switch back to the Domino server, go into, in, uh, into the addresses by alphabet and say, address this by first letter of last name. Uh, this is very helpful on mobile devices. And I have a sorting key, I can sort them. This is for ordering uh, the, the sort order or the order of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the views we are using. So I also changed the regional one addresses categorized by region. See the addresses in different countries. And I say this is 200 and save it. And I have the third one addresses flat. So let's say addresses with without any category. Okay. Now we have changed all uh, the three of them. Oh, I missed the sorting option. So I add the sort key here. And by doing so, and if I switch back, I have to move this. Okay. And if I hit refresh, I see addresses by first letter or last name, addresses categorized by view, and I see the addresses. Okay, much better. And if I go into, you see uh, we are using this information in the breadcrumb at the top also. Okay, very helpful. This was easy. Okay, now let's say the addresses. Sometimes I need these addresses, not in a notes application, I want to have these addresses also in a uh, CSV file or in Excel or something. Yeah, it's no problem. You just go back, switch to the view you are interested in, and you are allowed to um, you are allowed to export. And you can say allow export to CSV to CSV, and we can say yes. And I save it. And if I go back to the addresses view then you see we have a new action at the top and we are able to export this view um, yeah takes a moment and then we have 
the file name is the, the date of today, demo address, book outlook addresses, CSV. And yeah, it's close to uh, two and a half megabyte. You can download it. And yeah, as expected, if you open it, then you will see you will see the export and this works with every data. So we have done, uh, uh, make it available in every language and all the, the special characters you, you maybe have in your language are respected and you will have, yeah, an export. Nothing special, but very helpful. Okay. So let's jump into and see a little more of Teamworker, what Teamworker is about. Maybe you have recognized this add to bookmark thing. Uh, the, the first action you will see nearly everywhere. What is this for? Let's say you are working with addresses every day and you don't want to click twice. It's very easy. You can say add to bookmark and then there's a bookmark created for you. What does a bookmark mean? A bookmark means if you go to the starting point to the home page, you see the first entry we have here is your bookmark. You recognize the star at the, at the end. So this is a bookmark you created for you. And even if you have access to hundreds of applications, you can put the most important, your most important applications at the top and uh, have a shortcut to easily jump into these application without clicking twice or three times, or you have to search because it starts with a Z and it's at the bottom. So you see it here and you can jump in and then you are at the right place. You see demo addresses, addresses here. You also, this was one way to do it. Uh, this is for a long term. So if you do it every day, it may be helpful to have it here. The other thing we have is uh, we call it pinning and you can pin everything. Pin is related to the, to the client you're working on and it's saved on the client. So if you say, I want to go here uh, in the near future, you can pin it by using this little button at the top, at the bottom right. You click in here and you see that now a pin is created for you showing the demo address book. And you can be pin nearly everything. So this is an application. You can pin a view also. And if you jump into an address, I will do in a second, we also can just show uh, this single address. And what are these things for? It's very easy. You can easily do and switch between the different views applications so you can pin everything and it's very easy for you to just jump around from one application to another if you think about domino or the notes client it looks something like this and the more things you have open the harder it is to find the right one you're interested in by team worker you have an in-app navigation and you will have the, the option to easily switch between the different ones. If you don't need them anymore, you can just remove it by clicking the X. And of course, there can be many, many of these things. So if you have more, then you will have the, the additional things in this little button here on the left. And I remove them. So that now we only have the addresses here and the address book itself. Right now, it's not possible to jump into one record, into one notes document, you will receive an error. Maybe you have done and checked it before, sure, because the configuration of the form person is missing. Please contact your administrator. Okay, that's me. So we have to do something to, to make it work. So I close all the tabs here I have opened before and switch back and I go to the team worker. As you can see here, we haven't selected any form right now. For make it available, you have to add a form and we select the form person, say okay. 
wait a second. Now team worker analyzes the view at uh, the form and reads out all the information we found within this form. So we found all the text elements, all the form, uh, uh, all the uh, all the fields, we find out all the formulas, we find out all the embedded views, the subforms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we will see everything which in this form. Especially we have the, the window title, you know from the form, if you open uh, a document, you see something in this uh, tab, like person here. And if it's a new doc, it says new person. Otherwise it says first name plus last name, add company. And we just add Arnuk just to see how it works, okay? And I save this. And when the saving is done, we are able to jump into addresses. And now we see the address. As said before, surely we can add even address, uh, even one address to the pinning part. And now we have first name back, Avenschein at Demo Filmur Ernuk. And we have all the information here. We see the information at the top. You see my addition from the window title. This is showed here. And automatically we see an edit this document button, but we only see it if we are at least author of this document. So if we are not author, you won't see this button. And if I hit the button, you see we are switching to edit mode. We have all the information here, some bad information we don't need here. We have a first name, we have a last name. We have a job title, we have a phone number, mobile phone number, email number. We have the inherit thing and I can hit the inherit. And if I do so, you see there's a refresh of the form for all the notes developers listening. This is refresh form on keyboard change. So if the option is hit, then uh, a refresh of the form is done, as you see here. And I showed you the, the country selector before. If I open the country, you see in a more modern way, <clears throat> so if you are in the web, you are not interested in having that many dialogues because dialogues slow down uh, the working with your application. So as you can see here, we have the country and I can click here and then I get the selector instead of a dialogue. I see a list here and I just can type in here and select the Russische, uh, Russisch, Russian Federation, select them or I can select Belgium or whatever and work with, okay? So, and what we have done for making this available is just selecting the view and the form. What is done automatically from our side? By doing so, by selecting the view, we read out all the view formula and the view information uh, and the sorting options. By grabbing the form, we read out all the form elements. We read out all the height when formulas, all the lookup formulas, uh, the type of uh, the field. So if it's a date or whatever. And so you are able to easily uh, work and start with. So this is a bigger one. No, it isn't. So we see all the information. here. As you can see, a little annoying at the top, there are some information we want, don't want to see. These are coming from the original application. If I go here and go to the top. Uh, I have sorted it here, sorry. And if I go to the top and I choose Abel Heinrich, <coughs> We see ah, here's the parent uh, unique ID and the demo address book title here at the top right. So, and in, within Team Worker, we don't want to have it. So very easily, we switch to the configuration of the person, jump into the person and see the information. Ah, this is the parent unique ID. And here you can see which element is shown in read mode and which element is shown in edit mode. 
So I jump into parent unique ID and say, no, I don't want to show it in read mode. And I don't want to show it in edit mode. And I save it. I do the same for the summary information. We have seen at the top. No, no. And I do the same for the database name. So let's switch back. If I go back and reopen the addresses, you see the, uh, the information are gone and it starts by the first name, middle name, last name, personal title, all the information we have not had before, okay? You see, uh, change modified by Arnuk. Ah, somebody is changing the information here. Okay, uh, for sure, if you have document locking on, uh, we respect we respect that, and if the document is locked by someone else, you are not able to to work with. Uh, and the same as the, as in the notes client, if you are locking it in the client, then you are able to change it in Teamworker, because if you are the person who has locked it, you are able to to change it. Okay, so this in very slow uh, very slow speaking explaining and showing everything is the thing you need to get started with team worker and now if you open it on a mobile device you also should see how it works and that it works on a mobile device and it looks a little different i show it for all the people who are not connected to a mobile device so we have the same breadcrumb in the top we have a big filter or search functionality uh in here so we have the the same functionality but a bigger uh, line to 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 find the information we have an action bar here a, a hamburger menu to work with add to bookmarks csv export and we can open an address and you maybe you have recognized we don't have a table anymore if you are working on a mobile device most of us won't see, uh, are not uh, interested in seeing a table <coughs> because you have to scroll horizontally and it's not the way you want to work. So we transform the view into cards and showing the information one after another to make it easier accessible on a mobile device. And for sure, you can open it here. You can open uh, and see the information if you are allowed to, you have the chance to edit the document, switch to editing mode, and then you have all the, the, the countries we see before, and you can just type and select in here. We have a save and close button at the bottom, which is floating. So even if you scroll down, you always have the option to save and close uh, a view. So it won't, you don't have to look for where to save and close the form. You can easily work with. Okay. I go back here. Maybe you're interested in and say, okay, yeah, it looks good, but it's look, it's looking very green and all the orange stuff. And there's a team technology logo at the top left. I want to have it uh, more Arnok style. So we can start and do it and change the interface of Teamworker. There are things you can change very easily and there are things you can change if you have a little knowledge, uh, knowledge about CSS files. So let's start with the easy things. I go to the Arnook homepage and I just want to find out the one of the colors. Let's see. There's the agenda. So let's see if we can find out a uh, color. I open my developer tools here and I just want to inspect this thing. I should see this is, this is a logo. Okay, let's grab this information here. We see we have a color and we want to make this the color of team worker. So I go back there. I go to team worker i close I, I keep it open all the information about the address book 
I go to administration basic settings and there is a, a link, we call it customization. And here you have the option to change the background color. And now I change it to a more uh, Arnook style, save it. And if I go back and I go back to team worker, we see now we have the Arnook color as our base color in the back end. So let's choose another color for the, the pinning on the left side and let's grab the logo we are interested in. So I save the image and I save it to my uh, virtual device. Uh, we have the, the team worker client running on. Uh, users for the desktop, okay. It's PNG, main logo Arnok, copy, save it. And let's see if we can find another color. Maybe we choose the color of the selector here. And I select the color. Hopefully I can see it. Let's see where the color is. Here is the color. I grab the color and I go back to team worker, basic settings and see the header, the breadcrumb, the pins, background color. And I put in the color we had here. And I also add the logo. We should see on the desktop. Hopefully I can find it. Arnook, main logo, Arnook. Oh, I have to delete our logo first. I can't delete it. Cut, okay. And I choose the main logo and I save it. Hopefully everything works. And if we go back, I switch back here. We don't need this anymore. And I reopen it. Okay, there's a problem with the logo. Maybe it's cached. So I switch into this and do a hard reload that we don't have. Uh, yes. And now you can see we have an Arnold logo here and we have to change the base color. And yeah, so you also can change the color of the breadcrumb and the colors of the title. And so it's very easy for you to change the main colors we are working in it, okay? But maybe you say, I want to do a little more, not just the coloring. If you want to do so, it's very easy. You have to be a little bit of a web developer to find it out. So I inspect the information. It's always the same. So, and as you can see here, we have all the classes within the CSS. So we are working with diffs as everybody is doing right now. And every div we have, we have special classes in. So for example, we have the pin and we have the pin container and the pin wrapper. And you can find, you can always find all the information you need to tweak your team worker installation. So I go back here and just to show you what is possible, there's an area where you can put in any CSS you are interested in. And for example, I can change the border radius and change it to 50 per 50 uh, to 5px, right now it's 50. And if I do so and go back, you see now they are not circles anymore. Now we have uh, tri uh, squares. And by doing so, you are able to change everything. Of course, we have to, to move the x a bit to make it work better. But if you are interested in, you are able to change everything within Team Worker by easily overwriting the existing CSS. And we have CSS classes for nearly everything within Team Worker. Okay, 
let's dive deeper into the functionality of team worker. So I've made bag because I like the circles. If I go into the addresses and I see all the addresses here, maybe now, let's see the regional one. We see all the regional one. Maybe I'm working in sales and I'm only interested in seeing the addresses uh, from my sales region. So I'm only interested in Deutschland, in Germany. Okay. This can be done very easily in Team Worker. I just re import. I can use the existing one or I can uh, import another view. I import the regional one, say okay. We wait a second for making a team worker analyzing the, the stuff. Now we have it here. I change the view name and call it my sales region. Uh, computed region by user. Um, it's the same view we have uh, created before. But right now we use the thing we called category filter. Category filter means I want to show this view, but I only want to show a single category of this view. So let's think about where this is helpful. Uh, most of the time, if you think about, you have a list of all tasks available in your application, all open issues and you only want to see your issues, then you can make a categorized view by username as a first category, and then you can filter it by category. And then you can say my issues and you only see yours and not everything. How has it been done? Easily by using a head formula. So I call it filter. For easy working, uh, I just type in the language, uh, type in the country. But of course, you are able to do some uh, computing here and find out, ah, this is Arnuk Arnuk. You look into the address book, find out this is a Russian user, and then put in the, the, the Russian area, and you will have, uh, you will only see the information from Russia. And then I give back the information, and that's it. And after finishing that, I go here, we see my sales region. And now I see no categories anymore because I started in Germany. And here are the sub areas in Germany, even with New York, as we have seen before. Okay, so very easily, very helpful. You also can use this for things like, I only want to show the tasks of today. You make a category having the date and then using a filter only showing the today category, the content of the today category. And this is very easily and very fast. And you see it works reusing the existing view by region. You see it here and we just reuse it, uh, reusing it, but use another filter. As we can use uh, the, say, uh, the add formula here, we also have options within the person. Now I go into the form person. This is all the information, all the fields, including a sub form here. And I just want to show you one field uh, to make it uh, easy to understand what happens here. There's one field, this is the country field. This is the country selector. I showed before, and as you can see here, we have a dynamic keyword done by a DB, <coughs> DB column, nodes, no cache, and we do a lookup for the countries. And Team Worker uh, uses this formula and translate it in real time and read out the information out of the original database we are working with. So if we are in web, in web, in web we are connected to Team Worker, and Team Worker jumps over to the original database, switches the, the formula here to work within the target application because you see there's no server and no uh, database name in here. So if we just run it, you will see the information out of Team Worker, but we don't use the Team Worker information, we use the information out of the original database. 
and then thereby you get the information and we have a dialogue list and get it on the dialogue. We also have the option to have multi-values. We have uh, the, the recalc on change. So if you change a keyword, then the form should be re-rendered and everything is possible here. We also use height when formulas. We have a height uh, on formula. And as you can see here, there's all type of fields. So we are working with text and text areas, rich text, number, date, time, date, uh, so date time is date and time, date is uh, date only. We have time, authors, readers, names, all the things you may need to work with. So all they are here, computed, computed for display, computed when composed, all the things you know for years on the notes client, uh, the de designer client. Okay, what we are interested in right now, we want to use the space a little bit better if I jump into the uh, one address here, you see why all the information are uh, displayed one after another. By doing so, it's easy to work on a mobile device because we have all the information available here. If we are interested in make it more sexy and more uh, usable, we can change everything here. So I go into the form, this is the form, and I just add some information here to make it easier. First of all, I want to make the, the phone number to work easier with. So I go into the phone and say, this is a phone number. I also go to the mobile phone number and say, it's a phone number. And there's an email address, this is hidden in read and preview, I just remove it. I want to show it everywhere and say, it's an email address. By doing so, if I go back to this uh, and refresh, we see now we have the, the phones here and we have the email address here. And now we are able to easily click on it and uh, just give a call. Maybe here Skype is starting or Zoom is crashing, so I don't click. And I can click on the, uh, the domain name and then I can work with. So, but let's use the, the space a little better, a little bit better. So for doing so, I go into here and I give some, as you can see here, we have some sorting, having all the information uh, one after another and making it easy to, to recognize where it is. So I want to give some information about, uh, I want to make it more clear round about the naming and round about the, the contact informations. Okay, so I start, switch to edit mode and I say, I want to add a layout element. The easiest layout element we have is a section header. A section header is for giving some information. Let's say main information. I have a blue line and now we have it here. And the same we do before of the office phone, it's 311. So we start a section at the 311 contact details. If I go back, we should see main information and contact details. So we have a divider here. We can change how they behave, how they, behave, how they look like. So there's not only a blue line, we also have simple black bold line, whatever. And as you can uh, imagine, this is uh, all done by CSS. So if you want to have them look different, it's no problem. You can just overwrite the CSS and then uh, this thing will look different. Okay, so we have the main information here and it works. Now I want to have these information, not only one after another, but I want to have them next to each other. To do so in the web, in the, in the early years of the, of the web, uh, the designers, the web designers created the table and the table looks good on a big device like my browser here or on, a, on an iPad, 
but it doesn't look good on a mobile device because then you have to scroll if there is a table. So if you want to grab these information and make them available in a table like uh, in a table like behavior, you can create something like a table and it's called grid. To create a grid, we have two things to do. We have to have a row element from the starting point to the end point. So by us, it's 225 to 285. I can show it in a second. 225, 285. And just hit OK. And then you can see here the row starts and here the row ends. So think about rows like being, I remove this. Think about, about rows like a row is a table and this is one row of the table. And if we want to have uh, columns within the row, we have to create the row first and then we have to split the information into different columns. So I will put the first name, the middle name and the last name in the first column. So starting 229 to 251 column. 229 to 251. And now I have the option and can say, okay, how much of the space should be used on a wide screen? And how much space should be used on a small screen? So I can say on a wide screen, I want to have one fourth of the width. And on a small screen, I want to have the full width. <clears throat> now you see we have the row here, we have the column starting here, ending here, and we do uh, we create another column for the second part, 259, 259, 281. Next second. 259 to 281. And the same as before, I want to have the two-third uh, of the width. So we have one third for the one for the first column and two-third for the second column and the full width if we are on a small screen. So now we can check it. Yeah, it looks good. We have the row, we have column one and we have, have column two. And if I go back here and do a refresh, we see now that the first name, the middle name and the last name are in the first column and the personal title, the suffix and the job title are on the second column. The first column is using one third of the screen we have. The second column is using two thirds of the screen. And if I make it smaller and do a hit refresh, then you can see that the information are switched to uh, the thing we had before, one after another. This is because we are saying on a small screen we want to have it the, the full width, so there's nothing at the right side of it. And this is the easiest way to work with. Okay, these are just the, the simple parts and you can move and switch and do all the information here and work with, uh, work with, the, yeah, work with your form and reorganize your form. It will take some time, but it's easy to be done and after finishing, you can see, okay, it works. You can have, oh, it looks better. You have the categories, you have the sections, you have the clickable elements and everything else. So what else can we do? We have another layout elements. We have layout elements for register. Uh, so you have tabs you can work with. And we have two things which are really, really helpful. One, it's called HTML plane. So we have some elements here you can work with, but if you don't like the elements and you want to have your own elements, then you can write any HTML you're interested in. So maybe you want to say, this is the main company address book. And you say H2. We put it at position 10, so at the very top. And if we do so and hit refresh, you see this is the main company address book. And you can write any HTML you're interested in. 
and easily add data to your existing uh, to your existing form. So, and you have all the options you know about, you maybe know about uh, CSS or HTML. We also can put in uh, colors, or styling or classes or whatever we do, then you can see the color changes and you can work with, okay? By doing this, you are able to put any, any uh, HTML addition you want to have. You can add pictures, you can load a logo, you can uh, load everything. Uh, which, which element you are interested in to have within your form. Sometimes you want to do a little more. And if you want to do more, you are able to combine HTML with the underlying data within the form. So as you can see here, we just have a text. This is the main address book, but we have no information about the person we are currently watching at. So we have created something, it's called HTML dynamic. And I put it at position 20. And this is, we have an HTML string. So you can see on the left side, this is the elements we prepare for you and make them available for you. We have an HTML string, it's called global HTML and we easily can put in some information. So for example, we can say H1, uh, I use the, the pipe here. Uh, it's the same as the, um, how was it called? Uh, as this one, <laughs> I don't know the word in English, I'm sorry. Uh, it's the same, it's just easier to read. So that's the reason why I do it this way, okay? and we create an HTML and can say, okay, we want to, this are the data of, and then we can add dynamically, dynamically use the data we have in the currently open document. So I can say global target doc, for example, first name. So just Lotus script and then we, part, we close the H1 element and then we close everything, okay? So we start, this is the data off and then we dynamically add the information of the first name. If we do so and just hit the button, this is the date of Andre. And even if there is some special characters in it's no problem for the Lotus script, we check for the special characters and see this is the data of Andre. By doing so, you are not limited anymore. You can use everything you can think about. You can use this information and grab some data out of uh, an SAP or your CRM or your mail or whatever, your names. You, can, you always have the option, you have all the options you have uh, in Lotus, uh, you have in the in the Lotus script area. So you can use Eli to, to access an ODBC data driver, or you can use uh, the HCL enterprise integrator to connect to anything. You can uh, read out information from any source you are able to connect from the Domino server. And you are even able to create front end things like uh, embedding an iframe and loading some data from, from Google, Google Maps and showing the address we have uh, intro, uh, entered into the form and showing the, the Google Maps integration. Everything is possible and uh, your ideas are the limit. So it's very easy and you can have everything you are interested in. Let's go a little further. So right now, what all we have done before is about displaying data, how they are displayed, how we can change them, how we can uh, combine information and how we can structure the information. And one of the things is we have actions. Within our application, we have action and we want to have an action. Okay, let's create an action. 
it's as easy as before. We go to the person and say we want to have a, add an action. We call it change first name. Description, maybe we want to, we can choose from the icons we are interested in. I check the icon info. We can say if we want to have it in read or edit mode, we can add a height when formula. We can do a validation to ask, ah, you only are able to change the first name if there is a first name or something like that. We can run a dialogue, a yes, no dialogue. Maybe you're interested in deleting this document, then you want to ask before, are you sure you're interested to delete this application or delete this record? For my purpose, we are changing the first name. I say, I want to have an input field. In the input field, I have the text change first name. Please enter the new first name. And then we want to run some code and let's say we want to run some Lotus script code. We also can run add formula or run an agent. Everything is possible. For me, it's very easy. I, I always do the same. So I call it din action. And at the last line, I call this din action to, to run because then it's easier to, to copy and paste existing functionality we also can just write the code in here and then the code runs. What we are doing here is we just take the information the person has put into the input dialog and then we change the information in the, the record. So let's say global target doc first name is global validation input value this is the value we put into the dialog and then we do a global target doc save and that's it and by saving it we should see something new here okay somebody <laughs> has changed <laughs> the name i am working with very funny but i can change the first name with my new action so now the name is Vlad and I say, okay. And you see the code runs, your action has finished successfully. No, Vlad Putin. You see Vlad Putin, you see it in the breadcrumb, you see it in the title, you see it in our dynamic HTML, you see it in our first name here and If we do a refresh here, we see Putin and we see Vlad, the new first name. And if I switch to the properties, you see team technology administrator has changed this information. It's me. Okay. So I'm uh, logged in as team technology administrator. That's the reason why I see this information. So the same we can do, for example, the next action we add an action uh, create employee as copy okay we take everything here we don't need a dialog uh, this time we create a new document uh, we say which type the, which form the new document should have. And then we can easily transfer information from the currently displayed document to the new one. So the new one is the global target doc. First name is global source doc, first name. The same we are doing target doc, last name is global source doc last name and so on and so on and so on okay so it's very easy to transfer information from one document to the next and create another one for sure we have to add some additional information like a parent id or something like that and if i click create 
this, you see a new document is created for me and the first name and the last name are already filled. So very easily for us to, to work with and to just create a new document, call it Vlad 2, Putin 2, save it. And then the data is saved and we should see if the document saved su successfully. If I search for Vlad, we see Putin Vlad uh, and Putin Vlad 2. So very easy and you see no uh, performance issues or something like that by just easily creating. Maybe you are saying, I don't like the, the menu at the top. If I look at the menu, there's a menu and then there are the, all the things uh, beyond. Yes, no problem. If you want to have them look more nice, you can easily put a backslash in front of it. And if you add this backslash, then you switch from a menu we had before to a top level menu. Now within the menu, we see the change first name and we have create employee as a copy as a top level menu. So we have both of them, okay? But now it's not very good to have menu and this. Uh, let's do this. Uh, let's call it people action. People actions, create employee. And I also change the first name, the action change first name to people actions change first name. So as you did in, in notes in the client, we use a backslash, people action change first name. By doing so, now we have a new top level menu, people actions. And underneath we have the two things we had before. And yeah, now it's sorted. So we can have another top level menu workflow. We can have another top level menu, whatever. And yeah, this is how it works. And if we are working on a small device, people actions change first name, people actions create employee as copy. So you always know what you are doing and where you are. And as a last thing where we can work with and uh, work with Lotus script or Ed formula or logic, we have all the script events from the form here. So we have the query open, the post open, the query mode change, query validate, query save, query close. So all the information and all the events you need. And you can work with here and add some script or copy your existing script by uh, using a use. So you can use my script. Therefore you have to copy the script library into the team worker because the Domino server doesn't allow to run script libraries out of another application. There you have to copy it and then you can put it in here. <coughs> and you can nearly use everything within team worker. Uh, there are two limits. You are not able to work with UI elements. So you're not able to use UI workspace and UI document. But all the other things are available and you are able to work with very easily. Before we go to the live thing, I want to give you uh, one thing more we have created. So this was the demo address book we created by hand right now. And if we have done this, we can save it as a template. And if we have created a template, then we can reuse a template many, many times. I have prepared a template for today and I want to show you how to use an existing template. You say notes using template, select the application. I select the same application we are working with uh, all the time, demo address book. And I select uh one of the templates demo template address book v8 and i rename it demo template using template and i save it and that's all i have to do if i have a template then i can easily create another configuration and if i go here 
we see demo address back using template. Here we have five views giving a good name. If I go into the lead one, if I go into a document, then you see we have done some more uh, changing. We have created the personal information, the communication, the details. We have created a visualization example of a rating. We have a financial overview. <clears throat> and we have also added a Google Maps thing here, but only if an address is uh, inserted. Let's see if I can find myself. Your way to me. And then you can see this is my address. And you see, okay, here we embedded an easy, an iframe of Google Maps to easily display information based on the information we entered on the left side. And all this can be done very easily without many skills you need. Uh, on the right side, we always have the information about the attachments stored in any of the, uh, of the rich text fields. And here you can sign a document, change first name, all the things we have done before. This from my side, showing what Teamworker is able to do for you. And now let's switch to the interesting part and giving some uh, requirements to me. So you ask and I will show how it's possible or if it's possible to do it. So please use your mic or use your chat or whatever option you have to ask questions or send me some things you want to see in Teamworker and I will work with them. I hope my interpreter can translate it to me if there is any question or Margarita can help me if there is any question I have to answer. So even if you don't have any uh, requirement, I want I should show you, you easily can start by asking questions and then after translation, I will answer the questions to you. Margarita, do we have some questions? Uh, dear Tila, no, not yet. I kindly ask all our participants to do not hesitate to contact with us. <laughs> okay, that's good. But I think everything is clear. Yes, everything is okay. If so, it's more than good. <laughs> I like the challenges, so ask ugly questions to me and then... <laughs> no, we don't have <laughs> ugly questions. Okay, no problem, no problem. So, so if you don't... have time, uh, you can uh, speak something else or we can... No, I have to, I want to show you some additional, uh, for sure. Okay. Uh, jump deeper into what is possible and what not. But yeah, if there is um, if there is a, a question coming, just yes, interrupt me. Yes, we have one question. Как работает доменная авторизация? The domain authorization. So um, if you have, I have to ask back. Sorry. If are you talking about uh, trusted servers and uh, multi-domain environments? Пока мы ждем уточнения от участника, давайте еще посмотрим на вопрос, как дела с категоризацией в видах. Categorization, and, and we talk about what? Sorry, about the categorization types. So, if we are talking about categorization in views, then yes. uh, this is done automatically, uh, as you have done it before in the in the notes view. 
So this just reflects the nodes view because we use the nodes view for have the information really fast. We can't calculate them on our own. This would be slow and slow down the system. So this is uh, done by the Domino server and we just read out the information beyond uh, below a category. If I jump into one address and switch to edit mode and we create the information. So what we have done here by selecting the information here, there are all the uh, lookups and DB columns and things available you have uh, on the Domino site. And we can work with the, uh, with the values and we are also able to work with alias values. So if you have an alias and work with them, you are able to work with the alias. I hope this answers the question. If not, please uh, ask. <laughs> I think it's okay. Yes, yeah, thank okay. you. And about first question, I still wait uh, um, a little more information from our participant. Okay, so I can add some information about uh, how a team worker is working in uh, a bigger environment with different servers. So if you are a customer and have uh, two Domino uh, servers running in the cluster, Team Worker is able to work with the cluster to have a, a lazy or a, a balancing of the load. It is possible. If you have more than one address book, Team Worker is uh, able to work with more than address book, having a, directory assistance or something, whatever you have configured on your Domino server. So if you are using directory assistance, we can handle that. And if you are working with different, uh, with servers in different domains, so you have another domain, another company you are working with, and you have uh, a trusted server, trusted server, so another domain you are trusted, then you are able to connect to that server too and to work with that server uh, as it is one of your servers. Maybe you have some delay because of the distance between the servers because you have teamwork on the one server, let's say in St. Petersburg, and you have another server in Moscow, then yeah, maybe you have a delay because of the, yeah, it takes some time to, to grab the data but it's not that bad and it's working. It's working fine even with uh, yeah, other domains if you work with other domains, okay? Uh, great, uh, we have one more question. Uh, can user uh, authorize with Windows Active Directory? Yes, of course. We don't change anything on the Domino server and we don't change anything in your environment. We are just part of your Domino environment. <clears throat> so if you are interested uh, in having something like a single sign on, uh, what I think you are talking about, then you are able to add the single sign on um, uh, uh, into your Domino uh, configuration. And then you are able to connect to your active directory. If you need help, I'm not the administrator, but if you're interested in, I can share details with you. Just drop me an email and I can give you a hint. Uh, it's not team worker related, it's just Domino related. If Domino can do it, we can do it too. As you have may seen at the beginning, uh, we started with entering a username and the password. And this was Domino. And so everything Domino can handle, we can handle it too. So it's very easy. Thank you. And one more question. What is about similar functionality such as uh, with picklist collection? I haven't understand. Sorry, can you repeat? Yes. What similar. about similar uh, functionality such as vs dot 
picklist collection. Uh, picklist collection. Okay, picklist collection. Yeah, um, you are able to. Um, if you want to have a picklist collection and use it within Team Worker, so let's say, I, I, I hope I understand you right, that you want to have a, within the edit mode, you want to have an action here, and then there's a picklist collection and you want to collect whatever using a form or using, uh, using a, a view or using um, uh, keywords or using computed words. If you're interested in, in this case, I have to sorely say, uh, sadly say to you, you have to wait two more weeks. Then version four of Teamworker is coming. And then we have actions in here and we have added more actions here where you can chain different functionality one after another. So having a dialogue, running some code, having another dialogue, selecting something, running some code, doing some front end stuff. And you can combine all these actions, including the pick list collection. I can't show it today, but trust me, we will have it this year. And then you can even open dialogues showing uh, forms in the dialogue. So making your uh, your own dialogue showing four or five different things and you can click on the left the right the left the right and yes say yes uh, calculate something and then it would be possible <clears throat> if you're interested in testing in team worker wait until version 4 is available on our site and then you will see this is possible thank you i okay. see uh, that's all, yeah. Okay, I just want to show you two things more, which may be helpful. We have worked with a template. I have used this demo address book template. As you can imagine, we have the templates here. And if we go into this template, it's the same as the configuration before. There's just one difference. You can use a template for more than one uh, application. And I just want to show you the what we have done for uh, the iView, uh, the Google Maps integration. Yes, let's see. No, this isn't it. I have to find. What is this? Yeah, this is the. Uh, I will remove the key later, so you have to have your own key. You can't use our key. I, I will change it in a second. So if you want to do it, all we do here for the Google Maps integration is we create a global HTML as we did before. For, this, uh, for that, we create result, source, contact name, read out the contact name, and then we use the source, we use googlemaps.com embed view one. This is how Google Maps, you can copy this code from Google Maps. And all you have to do is to add a key and to add a source. In our case, we use the street and the city. And by doing so, all the, the other stuff is done by uh, Google Maps. And maybe you can see it here. We use an iframe with the source, the source is the Google Maps thing with the width and the height to, to have the right dimensions, frame order, uh, border and allow full screen. And that every, is everything you need <coughs> to connect to any outstanding uh, JavaScript framework or JavaScript functionality. And yeah, and the template I explained before. And one thing I want to mention is by using Teamworker, all of our customers having an development, development environment and the production environment. And if you are asking how can I bring an application from one environment to another, it's very easy. You can always export an existing configuration. So you export, I export to the desktop right now, oops. 
And by doing so, an XML file will be written to the destination you have chosen. Okay. And then you switch to the other system, switch, switch. And then you can import a configuration. And I just import the thing I just created, template address book. And I import it. And not much time later, you see your imported configuration. And now we have moved it from one to another. Okay, this is one team worker here, so you can't see it in real, but you get a complete copy with all the information, with all the persons, with all the action in the person, uh, and with all the code we have created here before. So it's very easy for you to switch from A to B. Okay, so that's from my side. This is the last chance for you to ask any question. If we don't have any more question, I will close my session today and say thank you for being my guest today. We have one more question. Okay. You have a module for analysis. Will it develop in the future? What are you planning to add? On the analyt analytics side, we are right now, um, there's a session next week where we have worked together with Panagenda on the analytics part. Uh, on the analytics part, uh, they have an ana analyzing tool too, and we connecting them to the modernization tool. So right now you can do it on the Panagenda side with a new version on our side too. Uh, you can just select the, the applications you want to analyze. Uh, and as a result, you get all the, all the applications which are heavily used. And you will find out which elements of the applications are used. And by hitting a button, all these elements are created in a new container. The thing we have done manually before will be done uh, automatically for you. So you have a basic configuration by a one-click solution. You can hear more about this next week. And we are rewriting, but this is not the next version, but the version beyond. Uh, we are rewriting the, the front end for analytics because we want to make it more modern. The, the analytics front end is okay, but it's... Uh, things are aging very fast in the web. So we want to have a new modern interface and give more options for interaction in the, in the analytics part. Additionally, we are working, but this is uh, the, the very future, thinking about writing back information into the original application. <coughs> so, um, there's no not much stuff we know, but we are thinking it would be helpful if you can write back from Team Worker to the original application and change something in the original. This would be helpful in modernization and in the analytics part, I think. So this would be helpful. Yeah. Cool. Uh, we have uh, an answer from uh, our participant. Uh, thanks. Very, very nice. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. And uh, we have one more question. Can you create an uh, embedded view on form? Yes. Yes. It's grabbed automatically. Uh, yes, it works. Um, let's see if I have an, this is our, okay. Uh, let's, I, I check if I have an application here. No, no, I don't have a, a selection here. Sorry, I'm not prepared. So let's see if I can do it here. So we can do it live. Let's see what applications we have. Uh, and okay, I go in here. Uh, 
Okay. I go into the designer. So I have the original application. So the designer is opening now the demo address book. And I create a new view and I call it, uh, I copy the region one. Uh, view embedded by city. So let's see. It's by embedded. That's this by city. So I create a new view uh, showing the addresses by city. Okay. What I do now is I take the city of the location, street city, and make it the category. This street city. Let's see if it works. No, I did an error, but we will have it in a second. Street City, oh, just a second. Let's see if this works. Street City, yes, we have the city here. And we have all the information of the city. I remove this column and I remove, oh no, the rest is, uh, I keep all the things here, okay? Then I say yes. Then I go back to the form. I go to the person form. And beyond, I put in here. I create uh, embedded, oh, we have to put it deeper, just a second. We have to put it on the address slide here. And we create um, uh, I have to find it uh, embedded view. And I choose the embedded address by city here and I say the width fit to window. Now we have it here. And I want to show just a single category showing the, the, uh, the street city. Okay, so we have an embedded view and showing all the addresses we have categorized by the city. Now I'm opening, uh, now I'm displaying a category, an embedded view here, having all the addresses and showing the addresses in the similar city. Okay. So I have created uh, the form. I have changed the person form and I want to save it. And I go back demo address book. I create a new configuration for that. Notes database. Demo. Use the demo address book. We just grab one view, the flat one. So, example. And we add our new form. It's the new person form. All the things we have done before, nothing special, nothing new. The form is written out. And now you see the embedded view is written out here automatically by Teamworker. You see all the, 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 the columns we have. And now the interesting part, let's see if it works. So we have the I have to save it. 
because I have changed embedded example. Let's see if I can see, this is the embedded example. We have the addresses flat. And if I go to one address, we see Abel Heinrich lives in Munich. So this is a person resisting in Munich. I have to see, here is Munich. And now we have an embedded view showing all the other contacts also living in Munich. So this is the embedded view, just an example to, to make it work, but you can use everything uh, as you can work with thing. Uh, and for sure you can click on it and then you can work with. It. So yeah, embedded views are possible and work and yeah, you have seen the result and you can click the result right now. You should see the result also on your demo page. Tila, thank you. Thank you very much. I think everything is clear for our participant. Okay. Then thank you, Margarita, for organizing everything. Thanks uh, to all the interpreters for helping me to make my voice available to the Russian people. And thanks for giving back the translation to answer the questions. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you. Bye.